Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining today. Today, we're talking to Denzel Mensa, who is, uh, he's got a YouTube channel, Denzel Mensa, as well as a life and personal development coach. He's an ENFJ. So let's get into talking about what it means to be an ENFJ, some of the relationship uh, quirks, I suppose, with INFPs and how you can better yourself. Possibly. This is going to load. No, it's just me talking to myself right now. Hey, what's up, man? I was, I was clicking the wrong button. I was I was clicking the wrong one. I was like, here we go. Nothing nothing's happening. That's okay. That's okay. What's up, man? Yo, it's nice to it's actually an honor to be on here. Um <clears throat> Cause I watched you all the time. I already told you. Um, mm -hmm. and then us both being in profile training, um, on mm -hmm. personality hacker and everything. Mm -hmm. And I saw you, it's like, yo, he's in my class. Like, I don't know. It's like up here, down here. I mean, not to like, self deprecate, nah. but it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, Whoa, like that's Matt. Like, and mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And, um, and yeah, like I said, I've been watching your content for a while, like back, one of the videos that I still talk about to this day is that Maui video that you made oh, yeah. about him being an ESFP and yeah. all the symbolism that you use, like his tattoo representing his FI. I was like, bro. And uh, <laughs> the Man of Steel video that you mm -hmm. did too and everything, um, all mm -hmm. your RPG stuff. And yeah. So anyway, all that to say, like, yeah, it's, it's an honor to be part of this, man. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Cool. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, per personality hacker. Um, I suggest everybody check it out. And if, if you got the funds and, and the interest in personality type, go there and, and learn about, you know, in depth about personality type all like in one nice package. Um, Antonia and, and Joel are just like a wealth of knowledge and support and help for everybody. Um, so definitely highly recommend that though they were one of the big turning points in my life in terms of personal development um was that similar for you like learning about personality type and stuff too? totally totally i i got into it um <clears throat> first from 16 personalities not a good site <laughs> in my opinion mm. um just not like so many inaccurate results and they don't go by the Jungian functions, they go by the big five and all this other stuff. But anyway, um, so I got, you know, two, I got mistyped on there twice and I was just like, ah, okay, whatever. Then when I found out which type that I actually was um, from my wife's older brother um, who was studying all of this in depth, <clears throat> then um, I started to look more deeply into it. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Um, and when I came across like personality hacker content, like their mm. podcasts, especially, it really gave me a different outlook on things. Like a lot of people, they see type and they're just like, yo, like, this is cool. I understand myself. Um, yeah. but I really like like what personality hacker is doing because it's like, they're actively teaching you how to be the best version of yourself, not to just understand yourself, but like, okay you use fe as a talent but now let's teach you how to use it as a skill you're using it at a level five right now but the highest level is level 10. let's show you all the different facets of this function and not why not stop there let's go to the other functions that you have in your stack too <clears throat> and yeah so from there i just went down the rabbit hole and then i started figuring out how to do the same thing with other people and that's how i stumbled into life coaching and now help mm -hmm. everybody else develop their superpowers as well yeah yeah, yeah. cool man yeah it sounds like a, a similar journey and similar mindset mm -hmm. um thank you as well about the uh the maui video and the superhero just content and stuff like that um yeah i i feel like if i just kind of tweak some of the delivery and you know keep working on it it'll it'll land and, uh, yeah, it, it definitely does. You're all, it's always funny because you talk about how, like, yeah, you know, I kind of like NE rambled over here. And it's like, what? No. I mean, maybe it's the nine in you, which I guessed. I I, I definitely called it. I definitely yeah. called it. I was like, bro, 
is he a nine? And then in one of the videos, I think the one that you uh, talked about with um, where you uh, interviewed Joyce Meng, um, mm -hmm. your INFJ video, you, like it came up and I was yep. like, I knew it. Cause yeah. I don't know, just the energy, like I, I resonated with that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I feel like your NE rambles are not nearly as rambly as you might think that they are. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and you're a nine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Social nine, nine wing one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We can talk about that too. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, if anybody doesn't know what that is, we're talking about the Enneagram personality system, I suppose. So, um, yeah. Okay, cool. So can you, uh, can you just give us like a, a run through of what is an ENFJ from your perspective? Like what is that personality type about? Okay. Um, the ENFJ, I'd say they're kind of like, they're kind of like the guardian angels of the world. <laughs> That's the way that I guess I could describe it, um, at least from my perspective. Um, a lot of times people describe them or us as conforming to society. Mm -hmm. And I think that does happen sometimes, but I think the healthier ones, they're usually actually like ahead of society mm -hmm. and they're cultivating and creating society. Um, I think that people often get a very one dimensional, maybe even two dimensional understanding of what FE is. <clears throat> Oh, it's just being nice and um, manners and giving people what they want. And it's like, that's like a very, very, very basic usage of FE. But when you're like using at a very high level, mm -hmm. that's literally what Martin Luther King Jr. used to try to get societies and different cultures to work together and, mm -hmm. you know, have harmony despite whatever their differences were. Yeah. Um, and he cast that vision. Um, I personally believe that he was a well-developed ENFJ, although a lot of sites um, say INFJ. Um, me looking at his life, I do believe that he's an ENFJ though, mm -hmm. um, as well as Nelson Mandela, who did a very similar thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that <clears throat> an ENFJ, like at their best, that's kind of what they're doing. They're observing society. They're observing how everybody interacts with each other. And then their introvert intuition, their second function or auxiliary function is gathering the patterns of that and noticing like, okay, I'm seeing that whenever we, whenever people interact in this way, good results. Whenever people interact in this way, bad results. And you just keep on registering that more and more and more until it gets to a point where it's like, it's not just single people anymore, but now you have groups and then you have communities and then you have whole societies. And before you know it, you're like learning, like, and you're trying to help reprogram and reconstruct society as you know it. Um, like, this is how I believe society should be structured and how we should be interacting with each other for the best results on having group harmony. And group harmony doesn't always mean um, just like kumbaya, or, but it also doesn't mean like tolerance of each other either. It means, um, it means being on the same page. That's how I see it. Um, despite whatever differences you guys might have. Um, and so for an ENFJ, um, again, if they're, I feel like if they're operating at their best, one of the biggest things they have is they're thinking so far ahead about how they want society to look like. They have a vision for how they believe society should look like. And then by the time that society actually catches up with that vision, they've already thought ahead, ahead again about like, okay, these are some better, because all they're constantly doing, all we're constantly doing is thinking about better ways for humans to interact with each other so that mm -hmm. we can have harmony. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's one of like the biggest things that would define an ENFJ. Mm. Thinking about ways to um, adjust and improve society so that people can work better and in whatever level or scale of those groups are yeah oh yeah yeah absolutely cool yeah that's awesome uh do you do a lot of uh i'm just i guess curious right now do you do a lot of like future pacing 
and like mm-hmm. you, like just you just know that this thing's gonna happen and then yeah. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> um my wife, uh, as I mentioned to you privately earlier, you know, is an ENFJ and mm-hmm. uh she she can just get these these intuitions, these hunches, right? That just like this person is doing this action because of this thing, like that is completely off of my radar. Um, <laughs> like when uh, we had a, you know, my, my daughter's three years old now. Um, nice. When she was born, we were trying to get some some people to come over, and and they just they wouldn't come over, right? Mm-hmm. We're like, what what's going on? Like we're we're friends, right? Um, and we kind of figured out like, well, this person can't get pregnant right now they're struggling with that so coming over to our place and seeing a baby was going to be like too much stress for them and and Mm -hmm. like she had this like whole connection of like that's that's why this is happening i was like really sure and yeah yep sure enough like it came out later that that was what it was and uh i've just learned you know this is something part of my growth journey especially within personality type is to defer those things to the people who are better at them um <laughs> delegating <laughs> you know for you know extroverted thinking does a lot of delegating uh, just mm-hmm. in general right um, mm-hmm. or at least it knows the value of it and it's something that i really really struggle with but in terms uh-huh. of personality type i'm just like yep you do this more than i do you've spent way more hours doing this kind of work mm-hmm. so I should at least trust it more at the start, you know, like, and just be like, okay, I see that maybe I'll process it. Maybe I'll work on it a little bit, but Mm -hmm. uh, in general with those things, it kind of, it helps it frees me up to do other things as well. Yeah. And I feel like that's a very efficient way to do things. Um, My wife is an ISFP. And when we both learned about type, because when I, when I first met her, I was trying to get her to become more like me and she's trying to get me to become more like her. Um, and then we learned about type and we're like, oh, you're the way that you are. You're wired this way for a reason. Like, you know, we're both Christians. So it's like, God wired your, your mind this way for a reason. Mm-hmm. Instead of me trying to get you to become more like me, I should help you to become more of who God created you to be. Um, and it helped us then also realize that her functions versus my functions shouldn't be like a versus thing, but it's like, those are tools and we just have to know when the right tool is supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. So now, because we both understand type so deeply, then we really have like, like very, very, very minimal conflict. And that's, that's something that honestly, I'm very, you know, especially as an FE Dom and as a nine, it's like, wow, I'm just like, so glad. Like we we handle conflict, (laughs) like so incredibly well. Um, And there's just so much like peace um, in our household. Uh, like there's so much open and honest like communication. Um, nobody really blows up at each other, but all that to say that it's because we're able to um, understand like, oh, you're using, like your NI at this point was doing this or your TI was doing this or, you know, but my FI felt like this. Um, and now we know like, okay, this is a situation for your TE, even though, you know, as an ISFP, it's inferior. Like, I don't, I don't sleep on the, inferior functions <laughs> so it's like okay like this is a situation for your te do yeah. it yeah she's like oh denzel you handle this this is the situation for your fe or for your ti mm-hmm. you know go ahead and do this kind of thing um and so that delegating really does help um especially in a relationship um and one thing that i respect about what your wife did um was she made the ni prediction like okay i'm pretty certain this is what's going on yeah. But then she also allowed, I don't know how exactly it happened, but the SE verification of what the NI had projected, mm-hmm. you said like somehow, yeah. sure enough, that's what came yeah. out. And yeah. I feel like that, like me and Joyce, we have a new YouTube channel. Um, and that was the first thing that we actually talked about um, mm-hmm. following your intuition. And that was one of the things that like, you know, even though you might have like an intuitive hunch about something, mm-hmm. make sure that you also find ways to like verify it and make sure like, okay, was my intuition actually right over here? And that's what will help you like trust it more. So I think that that, it, it helped you as you, you know, like now you have like more credibility with her, yeah. um, like, okay, 
she was right about this, she was right about that. Um, so now I can trust her with things that we might not even be able to verify. Like if somebody's you know, about to like seriously get hurt, you don't want to mm -hmm. verify that prediction. <laughs> we can just yeah. trust that let's not yeah. go along with this. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point within like verification, not just of NI and to SE and stuff like that, but like just I mean, this is something that I talk about with within INFP growth a lot as well as like you have your introverted sense and you have all these this collection of past experiences that you're referring to this quest log of you know this thing happened this thing happened and a lot of times uh we just kind of get stuck in that loop of mm -hmm. you know, it's just mm -hmm. this this happened before i can't do anything about it but mm -hmm. really can you not do anything about it is that actually true like you have to put yourself out there you have to get out of whatever that comfort zone is you know mm -hmm. and and check against that SI with NE, get new experiences, have new things happen to you, put yourself in new contexts so that then you you have like a, a broader scale, I guess, a broader zone of interpreted sensing of captured experiences and things like that, that you can check. Yeah. Uh, but if you just constantly check only within your subjective self, then you know, you're always going to be right. And that's not <laughs> be a good thing for you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and something else uh, that to go along with what happened with uh, your wife and, you know, just relating as an ENFJ um, and future pacing. <clears throat> it's mm -hmm. to the point, again, like at least for me, um, where sometimes you are so ahead that it seems as if you're in some sort of like play like life is just a play of some sort. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you already know everybody's script and mm -hmm. you have to kind of play along in the play. Like you're aware that you are in a play. Mm -hmm. Other people might not be aware of it. Maybe they are. Either way, as long as everybody follows their script, things will go along um, and you know, nothing will be like disturbed in that way. Um, but you have this like knowledge of like, yo, I'm in a play. Oh, mm -hmm. this is where I now say my line. Okay, I know that this is gonna happen in chapter three, but if I say something right now in chapter one, then that might not happen in chapter three. Right. So in order for that to happen in chapter three, I have to play my part. Plus when it gets to chapter three, a lot of times I have to act like I didn't even know that was gonna happen back in chapter one. I have to act equally as surprised as everybody else. Um, mm. And I don't know how many other ENFJs might do this or how frequently, but um, I think that that's like a really like FE and I thing that at least for me, like I see myself doing a lot, even when I was like younger, um, before mm. I knew about type. And then when I learned about type, I was like, whoa. Um, because a lot of times like that can really freak people out. Um, when yeah. they know that you're in a way like playing a part of some sort. Mm -hmm. And then now they're like overanalyzing everything that you're doing. And like, so what's going to happen in chapter three? It's like, well, I can't tell you what's going to happen in chapter three. <laughs> Cause then spoil it's going to kind of like, yeah, it's going to spoil it. It's like, well, how can, how can you know? But I can't know. It's like, because I'm going to still play my part to get to mm -hmm. chapter three, but you might not do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, or I can't trust that you, I can only trust for myself. So, yeah. That's I don't so know cool. if that made sense, but. Uh, yeah, I, I got you. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. That's completely not how I interact with the world. So <laughs> um, it does It does happen with my wife a lot in terms of like, um, just on a smaller scale, like <laughs> she'll do something and she'll like, I, I know, I know if I put the cup here, somebody's gonna bump into it, it's gonna fall over. Okay, like just constantly like she she just knows that but she, she'll still kind of like she'll still do it because mm. i guess she wants that like se verification of it i'm not really sure but like yeah she's like i, I know <laughs> this is a bad idea and she'll do it and she's like yep that was a bad idea and so it's constantly me saying like trust your intuition it's okay just just stop doing things that you know you shouldn't do and, and it's it's interesting it um, helps a lot with future planning though because yeah. then you you understand those types of dominoes that make things happen. So then a lot of times, 
especially having SE as a tertiary function, it's like, okay, either I know this is going to happen because I've observed everything right now and that's what's, and I can just predict that's gonna happen, or I know the way to set up the dominoes by knowing the pattern of how things work to where I can make this happen. And so if I like set this right here, if I set the cup right here, and then I know that, okay, after you knock it over, you're gonna have to go over to the broom to do this, but then I leave something over there that I know will distract you. And then it's like, oh, what's this? And that'll lead to this. And it's the whole like scavenger hunt kind of thing, except on like a wider scale. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, I know that you're gonna end up at this last point. And that's kind of like playing like, <laughs> like, like chess with someone. And again, like that obviously can be done in very harmful ways, but sure. um, usually, if the ENFJ is like well intentioned, it's it's a manner of like actually like you know helping the person to get to a certain um thing like arrive at a certain place like on their own and you're just kind of like I guess guiding them in a way mm -hmm. and all of this sounds like very vague. Um, I can't really think of like any examples without it like being like super elaborate right now, but. But yeah, like stuff like that, like just it could start with something as small as like the cup on the corner of the table to now like just really big things. And that's that's what I've like really seen within myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, like this is this is incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, I guess related to that within like conversation, um, I'll, I'll have like a, a goal of, of kind of what I want the conversation, where I want it to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just, I learned to just trust my extroverted intuition to like, just start feeding the system with new mm. emergence and then like mm. playing off of that with the goal in mind. If you, if you have the goal in the mind, in mind, then you can kind of like weave it to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I see, I see that they're kind of connected in like a kind of a, a different blend of it, right? Like how you're approaching it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I do exactly like the same thing. Like oh, yeah. with that whole, like I said, like, you know, life is kind of like a play a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in a conversation, then it's like, okay, I, I if I have a desire for how the conversation is supposed to come out, then that's when, you know, I might start like, you know, hitting the steering wheel a little bit and doing this and doing that. Um, but but yeah, pretty much, yeah, it's, it's the same thing, you know, just like dropping things here and there until it's like, oh, how did we end up here? And again, you mm -hmm. have to sometimes low-key act surprise to, again, play your part. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I think that meticulous is a very big word for ENFJ. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's, that's something that just comes up for me very frequently, like... Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of online descriptions talk about how, oh, the SE tertiary, so it makes them like very impulsive, which, you know, a lot of ENFJs most likely are. Um, but I, I do find that um, for the most part, they don't get enough credit for how meticulous that they are. And maybe it's because, you know, if they do, if that does come out, that'll again, like strike fear in people. Like, well, this mm -hmm. is quite powerful. So maybe it's best to just believe that this person is just this person without a backbone and <laughs> and doesn't mm -hmm. have like that much influence um and it's just super nice and all of that and uh, yeah that way it's I, I think of like again like man of steel like mm -hmm. if we don't know that he, clark kent is superman then we're not going to try to hurt him um mm -hmm. i wrote a poem about this one time um where it's like okay just because this person might be clark kent and and he's capable of doing all of these things. Doesn't mean that he's going to do the things that you're afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's better for Clark Kent to just keep his identity concealed, because people can't trust that Clark Kent is going to always use his powers for good. Mm -hmm. um, and so instead, he would just continue to play this person that nobody really would expect much from or they'd expect like half as much from a fraction of as much from. Mm. Um, it sounds, sounds like something that comes up a lot is, is playing roles um, mm. within 
society within relationships. Um, my dad is an ESFJ um, mm. and he's mentioned like, you know, he kind of feels like a social chameleon mm-hmm. at times. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and, and with everything, you know, there's, there are chances for good and bad uh, with anything, right? Like you could have all the power in the world. You could be a, a good person. You could be a bad person. Mm. Right? Water, water can kill you if you drink too much of it. Right. But like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it depends on how you, how you wield the tool and how you use the tool. Mm. Um, uh, let's see. So I want to talk a little bit about extroverted feeling and emotions. Um, and kind of where those come from or how you relate to those. Um, do you want me to give an example first or do you just want to start yeah, talking sure. about it? Or... Yeah, no, I definitely. You can give an example. Okay. Um, uh, my, my mother-in-law is also an ESFJ and my father-in-law is an ENTP. So he's got, you know, FE as well. So there's a lot of FE around me. Uh, I got a very good <laughs> oh, ENFJ friend as well. <laughs> I've I've learned to appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it was it was a struggle for a while, you know. But, I bet. <laughs> so, yeah, I I call extroverted feeling within like the RPG role playing game system to be the unifying envoy. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it, it's just situations like how can we unify, right? And and as an envoy, as like a, a messenger ambassador, right? Trying to to help mediate between people and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, when when emotions come out, I and my my wife and I have a, a very different you know approach to what we do with those emotions, right? Like I I tend to just sit on them and and try to process them internally, introverted feeling, right? As much as I can, uh, probably won't even say anything about it, right? I'll just kind of it's I, I feel that it's my responsibility internally to process through these things. Um, she, and this is something I, I pretty sure I heard from personality hacker before too, is like extroverted feeling likes to have those emotions out, right? It, even if they're not really sure, like if my wife is is happy about something, she wants me to feel at the same level of happiness as her. Mm-hmm. Right? That helps her kind of read how happy she is and, and kind of relate to other people and stuff like that. Same mm-hmm. with like frustration or anger as well. Like if, if she's angry about something, internally is not the way for her to process those emotions, right? Like mm-hmm. getting them out and uh, maybe possibly doing things that kind of irritate me or whatever too. Um, this is nothing against her, but this is just like kind of a, a pattern that I've seen. Um, will help her better understand how she feels about the situation. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And so like, yeah. there will be this kind of like, this is the, this is the feeling, this is the emotion that we're having right now. Mm-hmm. And then she can reflect off that and say, okay, this is, this is not what I want right now. I can adjust it because it's, it's known and it's out here. Mm-hmm. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, <clears throat> For me, maybe it's because I'm an Enneagram Nine. That's yeah. something that I I don't relate to, okay. um, or I relate to it when it comes to like quote unquote good emotions. I know that you're at five, so you're like, sure. well, every emotion is like good and bad and all of that. But like for me, it's like, yeah, no, like if there's like emotions, I I'm, I'm like feeling like if for whatever reason I identify anger within myself, especially or you know some sort of like sorrow sadness or whatever i actually just habitually try to keep everybody from feeling that from me oh. um, i try to like really keep it to myself mainly because i know how easily i can influence everyone um so it's kind of like what i was saying like you know with having such a big grandiose like superpower then it's like, okay, I have to be careful with this. I could easily make everybody happy, you know? Sure. But now if I'm outraged about something, but it has more to do with like, you know, it doesn't have to do with the people that I'm like, if it doesn't have anything to do with my coworkers, mm-hmm. then I'm not gonna allow my outrage to infect the coworkers around me um, mm-hmm. and interrupt that kind of like harmony 
I'm not going to allow my sadness, you know, I'm having, if I'm having like problems at home for whatever reason, um, I'm not going to allow that to come into work <clears throat> and, uh, you know, affect the other coworkers. Um, mm -hmm. And this is something that I actually, honestly, you know, just being candid, I used to be kind of judgmental about with people. Um, I think I even have a video from some years ago called Get a Grip. Okay. And it's pretty much like talking about like, you know, like keeping control of your emotions, like, mm. hey, like you're you're ruining it for everyone else, um, which I know that especially as F I, I've been growing and learning like FI users for them, a lot of times it's like, so when do I become to matter? You know, like, okay, you keep mm. on talking about everybody else, but my emotions, my emotions. Mm. And then as an FE Dom, it's like, yes, your emotions <laughs> and uh. those are bad emotions don't infect everybody else with it. I don't yeah. infect everybody else with my bad emotions. Why are you? But yeah. now it's like, I better understand, like number one, FI users, they feel their emotions more strongly um, than the general FE user does. I know that for me, even more dampened because I'm a nine, which is, I guess, like number two, that mm. I've just recently had that epiphany, like, oh, some people just really get like that, you know, mm -hmm. strong and deep of an emotion mm -hmm. that they can't help but cuss someone out right there. They mm -hmm. can't help but, you know, like do this, like react. Mm -hmm. Whereas like for me, I never really have, or I very rarely have that strong of an emotion that I'm tapped into mm -hmm. to where it's like, I just react from mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. So it, of course it'd be like, why, why does everybody just have to express these emotions? Why can't they just keep mm -hmm. it to themselves? But then it's like, oh, maybe if I was maybe if I was feeling those negative emotions as strongly as they were, then I'd probably have just as hard of a time. Um, so yeah, that's how it is for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the last point that you said is like maybe if I was feeling that as hard as they did or in that way, then I would do the same thing. Like that is that is like the key to I think personal growth and better relationships mm -hmm. and, and everything. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like if I were in that situation and right. had all the experiences that they had and had all the, the context that they had, then I would probably do the same thing, right? If I was raised this way, if I was in this situation, like, yeah, personality type, and there's all these other variables, but um, people, people try to do the best that they can with what they have, right? Yeah, with exactly. all the resources they have. And so like having that, uh, just that moment of, Oh, well, maybe I would do that too. Maybe that's, mm. maybe that's just, you know, they made the best choice that they could. Like, I think that is just so powerful for, for growth and development. Agreed. Definitely. <clears throat> um, and with, within the Enneagram type nine, I want to get to some of these questions soon too, but um, yeah, sure. within the Enneagram type nine, yeah, that constant, not wanting to rock the boat, not yeah. wanting to, to create issues for other people. Mm -hmm. um yeah I, I can see i can see that based off what you were just explaining earlier yeah mm -hmm. uh, i i i really i don't necessarily identify with conflict avoidance mm -hmm. but i would like put the caveat with like unnecessary conflict avoidance mm -hmm. like if there's if there's like if there's a fork in the road and if i say it if there's a way that like I can say it this way and we're gonna like hash it out and all that and then we're gonna get to you know true harmony or if I can present it this other way and we don't have to hash it out um and we just kind of like sit like talk it over in a civil manner which is always mm -hmm. my preference yeah. and then we still get to harmony that's still conflict but mm -hmm. you know it's not it's not as like like I don't I, I think that conflict doesn't always have to involve us yelling at each other and not being able to hear each other out. In fact, if anything, that's, in my opinion, the longer route, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I I don't have enough gas for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I, I'd always rather, like, take this road. And so if I see that, you know, somebody's, like, trying to, like, elevate the situation in that mm -hmm. manner, I'll, I, I would check out. Like, I think that yeah. we are a little bit too riled up right now. So I don't want to say my piece. Instead, I'm either just going to pause this and we'll mm -hmm. talk about it later when you're more cooled off. Or 
Um, I'm just gonna sit down, I'm just gonna listen to you. And then later on, I'll say my piece when I feel like you've gotten it all out of your system. Mm -hmm. But I'm not about to be like shouting back and forth with you. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't serve a purpose in my mind. Yeah. (laughs) I have a a friend that's a, sorry, he's an ESTJ eight and his wife is, I believe in ENFJ. Um, Mm. But yeah, I, I lived with them for a while. And there was, there were constant like arguments and and stuff like that. Like, you guys always, you guys always fight, and they're like, no, we don't fight. This is, you know, we're we're just impassioned about this topic, right? Like we're just we're just talking about it. And like for me, everything was, you know, I'm extremely conflict avoiding everything. <laughs> no, you guys are fighting, like er- <laughs> fighting, 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 fighting. But they, I mean, they've been together for like a decade or something like that, right? That's what's up. No, that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think that's my bias too, of course. Because my yeah. wife, Jamila, she said that, you know, well, how do you decide what's called unnecessary conflict? Like, you know, that's a good point. In my opinion, unnecessary conflict is, again, like what I just explained with the bickering, like too mm-hmm. loud and everything like that. Um, if it's not civil, then, you know, I mean, you can get passionate, but if you're passionate to the point where you're just, you're listening to respond, and you're not even like really like listening to actually understand. I think that that's unnecessary conflict. But yeah. I know that once again, that's just my outlook. So, but I, I have definitely seen couples that you know they fight or are impassioned in the same ways, yeah. and they, they're still going strong. So it's like I respect them. It's just that's just not how I'd want to roll. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, there's so much to talk about. Um. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> Do you know any INFPs? I see oh, some yeah. questions about compatibility, so um, I figure we should just kind of. Yeah. yeah. How do you I, get along with them? I okay. So I will be honest. I my younger sister is an INFP. We are the absolute best of friends. Like, you know, like we, we just, I can literally count up on my fingers like t- two times since we've known each other that we've like fought. Granted, she's a self-preservation nine, so maybe that also, <laughs> you know, but um, we just, we just really mesh well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, my best, my, uh, one of my absolute best friends from high school She's a 9FP. Um, her name is Albany. She's, I always call her, like I literally uh, refer to her as like one of my favorite human beings to have ever existed. Yeah. So yeah, like um, I definitely love her. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have another friend who's also an INFP. Um, his name is Caleb. Yeah, I know, I know quite a few of them um, and mm-hmm. I get along with them. Um, but uh, when it comes to like, at least like romantic compatibility. I remember when I first got into type, um, I guess, you know, this is gonna be interesting because again, you're married to an ENFJ, but like, this is just from like my experience and like what I, you know, whatever. Um, I've always seen that the best matches for ENFJs, according to theory, are INFP and then ISFP. Mm -hmm. And I bought into it until like I, you know, I did the F E S E thing. <laughs> yeah. And I really started like observing okay. a lot of ENFJ, INFP dynamics. Yeah. And and then I also, you know, I'd see like on the Facebook pages, like the ENFJ, INFPs, like, you know, one day INFPs like, I need to find me an ENFJ yeah, in the next exactly. we got two some months people. to a year. Yeah. And then all of a sudden <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I hate him or he hates me. Or yeah. and it's like the conclusion that I've come to is that a ma- vast majority of the time, INFP and ENFJ are better off as friends um, mm. because I think there's an initial romantic attraction. And then when they really get there, then it takes work mm-hmm. that probably a lot of them are not really ready to make because they don't have, they don't use any of the same functions, but exactly. instead it's like they have, but, but the confusing thing is that every, uh, dichotomy yeah is the same like feeling yeah. is at the top for both of them but the INFP is using introverted feeling the ENFJ yeah. is using extroverted feeling 
then they both are using intuition, secondary, but the ENFJ is using introvert intuition, the INFP is using extrovert intuition, like, and it just keeps on going down. Um, and they will butt heads so much with that. And if they don't really have that understanding of what's really going on, then they won't make it. And a lot of times, even having that understanding, they look at it, how much work they'd have to do. And it's just like, oh, this yeah. is a lot. Um, yeah. And so it's like, yeah, let's just be better off as friends. And I think that they make superb friends and superb like teammates. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's how I see it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, definitely. Like having no functions shared uh, definitely creates a lot of like, we're doing the same thing. Wait, no, we're not. Like we have, mm. the, we're, no, that's like, why did you do it that way? Like this constant, like w trying to figure out why we thought we were in alignment and then mm -hmm. it wasn't, but yeah. it's just, it's, it, it just appears that way at uh, the surface level, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can see, you know, uh, within ISFP and an ENFJ, like at least having that, that middle ground, you know, for you and, and ISE, you know, um, really helps, I think, bring a lot of that stuff to like manifest it. And you're like, okay, we're, we're taking actions on all these same things. Yes. Yeah. Like this is, this is the world that we're creating here. And then you can bring in your versions of feeling and judging to, to kind of balance that out and check mm -hmm. and make sure that you're going in the correct direction. Right. Yeah. Cause it's like, we're seeing the world in the same or at least very similar manners. Um, and so then when we talk about it, then it's like, okay, you are seeing what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, then it comes to like the FITE, which is where sometimes we might clash. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, well, I want to do this with this information. It's like, well, I want to do that with this information. Whereas like, you know, with um, an NFP partner, um, an NFP might look, it's like, you're not even seeing the world the same way that I am, but it looks like you are. <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. again, it's like we're F, like the feeling, intuition, sensing, yeah. thinking. Um, and so, yeah, that can get kind of like tough for mm -hmm. at least from my perspective. For sure. For sure. Um, so let's, uh, let's bring up this one. <clears throat> I'm going to try to read it. I have a, <clears throat> I have a light right here, so I can't quite read yeah. it all. Um, so hi, Matt. I'm an, this is, this is bad. All right. I'm an INFP in my. BFF is an ENFJ. I sometimes feel overshadowed by her extroversion on social events as she loves talking and attracting uh, most of the attention. Any tips on how to work on this? Um, yeah, yeah, that happens. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I not just with ENFJs, but just with around extroverts. Like I, I, I lived with that ESTJ and an ENFP. Or, extremely extroverted right mm -hmm. um and a lot of times it was just me like chilling in the shadows and and like you know feeling like i'm am i here right now right and i i learned that i need to assert myself i need to express myself and it's uncomfortable it's it's awkward to to try to fight for attention and fight for the spotlight mm -hmm. but you don't have to see it that way and you can see it as like i'm I'm offering something to this conversation, right? I have something important to share because mm -hmm. you do, you know, whoever you are, you, you've got something important to share. So mm -hmm. kind of making that the priority instead of feeling like I need to, to like one up uh, her energy or her social ability in the situation, um, I think might be one approach to, to getting there. For sure. Yeah. Um, for me, I think two things come to mind. Um, the first thing is that I wonder if your ENFJ friend even knows that you want the attention. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we assume for other people, but I guess that doesn't mean that we're always right. Um, so because you might be a more introverted person, um, then I wonder if she believes that she, if anything, has to take most of the hit. Because um, I know, like, I have an ISFP wife, once again. And when we go out to, like, social events and everything, she literally, she told me that she loves to, like, kind of, like, use me as a shield. Yep. I, I am an extrovert, yes. 
but that doesn't mean I always want to be do, to be the one doing the talking. I don't always want to be engaging. I don't always want to be like attracting like attention or whatever like that. But if it comes down to it that one of us are going to be getting attention, I will take the hit for my wife because I know that that'll mess her up even more. Um, mm-hmm. But if she communicates to me in some way that she wants more of that share of that attention, I will happily allow her to have more of that space. Um, and so I wonder, you know, if that ENFJ of yours knows that they are not really necessarily protecting you from the attention, but if anything, they're taking it from you mm-hmm. and you actually would like more attention despite being an introvert. So that's mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and then the second thing is for me, my preference usually is actually facilitation. Um, so it's not even necessarily like being the center of attention, but more like making sure that if anything, I'm behind the spotlight. So mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, show like I'm like shining it on everyone else mm-hmm. um, and allowing everybody to like, okay, if we have a mic, sure, I might be, I might be the, if you consider being the center of attention, being the person who controls where the mic goes, okay, fair. And that's probably me, but I won't always be having the mic. I'm trying to make sure that everybody else has the mic. If anything, that they speak more than I do. Um, and when I see that things are like dying down, then I'll try to like amp up some more conversation in some ways. Uh, uh, so that's at least how I view things. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, definitely the first point, especially like make sure you guys talk about it, you know, like mm-hmm. um, yeah, if you got whoever it is, if you have an issue with your partner or a friend or anything like that, like they, they might not know. Right. Especially for INFPs. We, we hold a lot of that stuff very close and we try to hide it and, you know, cover Mm -hmm. it up and stuff like that. Um, so talking about it is definitely a good thing. Um, and you know, there are those tendencies and habits that, you know, she'll, probably your bff will probably drift more into the the spotlight right mm-hmm. just by who they are right by the actions that they take and the, the mindset that they have yeah um but that doesn't mean it's always going to be like that it doesn't mean it has to be like that and it could be something that both of you work on and and you train yourself as an infp to to get more comfortable with creating new experiences and and commanding and controlling those experiences in whatever way that that works best for you yeah, um for and sure. and for the enfj that might be you know the the on-ramp into doing what you were just talking about denzel of like being able to kind of step back and and facilitate the engagements more right maybe that's mm-hmm. what she, the bff needs right mm-hmm. but hasn't yeah. gotten to that threshold yet and maybe that conversation is something that would do that yeah yeah i agree <clears throat> cool. Um, let's see, we got I'm trying to think. There's not really too many questions up right now. Um, so I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, you did catch a live one. Thanks for, for joining. Um, is there anything that you feel would be from your perspective? Um, maybe a growth point or something that INFPs could take from ENFJs? I know that's like a, that's a massive question, but. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it fit like, like actual, like the general like scope of ENFJ. Uh, well, just and in general, advice to INFPs or? I think that one thing that I guess like I've noticed um, from INFPs a lot of times is, and again, they can't help it from my understanding um, because they're FI dominant, <clears throat> is that everything that's said is like, you know, taken so personally um and then if it 
might hurt them or offend them in some way, then it can like cloud a lot of things immediately. Mm-hmm. So then it clouds their judgment of a person to now become like a confirmation bias or it makes them automatically like, you know, just all of these things like it's like it's like, oh, as soon as you as soon as somebody no longer fits the INFP's like um ideal of mm-hmm. a person, mm-hmm. um, then it's like just this one aspect a lot of times, not always, but I've seen it a lot of times can destroy the whole castle of the relationship. It's like, wait, what? This one thing, I, I never thought yeah. that you would be this way. Well, then how many other things are there? That's, yeah. and it's just yeah. like, wait, whoa, I, I'm still who you think that I am. It's just, I've changed in this area or um, oh, you've changed in this area. Then how many other things are you gonna change in? Or like, I don't, uh-huh. even, I, I feel like I don't even know you anymore. It's like, what? That's, that's a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> I yeah, don't know what it's yeah. if you don't know me, but. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think that that's probably one of the biggest things. And I I don't, I guess what the reason why I'm hesitant to say, oh, you should learn this from the ENFJs, is that I I could potentially see ENFJs doing similar things. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that you know ENFJs are like the the token type that practice this, Um, but I think that. Generally speaking, I have seen ENFJs handle such situations better mm-hmm. because they are focused on how are we connecting? Yeah. Well, what is wrong with this dynamic? Mm-hmm. And how can we fix this dynamic? Mm-hmm. And so they are often trying to actually, like, you know, say, like, okay, what did we get wrong here? How can we adjust this? You know, et cetera. Um, I want to hear you out dang, you know, I actually didn't expect this from you or I thought of you in this way or whatever. But okay, no, we can still move with this. Um, Whereas like, at least from my experience, INFPs a lot of times, once like they can love you so hard, so Mm -hmm. hard until one or two things that didn't fit their view of you, their idealized view of you, especially like lacking SE, I guess. It's like, it shatters and then Mm -hmm. boom. So that's that's kind of how I view things. Yeah, um, I think one thing that um, might be a possible explanation for what you were talking about about like finding, you know, the INFP might find one thing that mm-hmm. the their partner does that they don't trust or whatever, and that kind of expands out, is because within us we also deal with that. Like, mm. if if I'm if I'm drunk and I do an action then like I've, I've done that action and now that version of myself is inside of me. And that's something that now I have to contend with. Like I'm capable mm-hmm. of doing that thing. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. I'm capable of doing that thing, well, what else am I capable of doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and so then there's this whole, like I have to redo the puzzle of, of my identity. Right. Yeah. And so within another person as well, like if another person did something that, I didn't agree with, then I'm like, well, mm-hmm. maybe I misjudged that whole thing. And now I got to try to figure that out. And then if, if you're not uh, like bringing it back to the very start, if you're not verifying, mm-hmm. right, then, then you have, it's just speculation and it's just going into yourself and pulling out all these probably negative experiences and negative viewpoints of it. Mm-hmm. Cause you're, you're, um, you're pulling information to make that evaluation that your FI did accurate, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it's just going to appease that. So like the, the best thing is you yeah, had to, to get out there and actually have a conversation mm-hmm. uh, and, and interact with the other person and, and tell them about it. But that is, you know, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because um, FI could be, you know, um, uh, correlated with TI, where it's mm-hmm. like, if TI might find like one node in the system that's like, you know, like inaccurate, it's like, oh no, like yep. this yep. whole system is flawed. <laughs> yeah. And so um, 
yeah, same thing like FI is like, oh shoot, like if I can see this in myself, I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. And then I guess like that's that, you know, projection, which mm -hmm. I feel like also happens a lot of times. Um, and I'm gonna reverse this question back on to you. So uh, be ready for that. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, I, I've seen that also happen a lot of times where it's like with FI, it's like, okay, because I would feel this way in this situation, that means that you must be feeling this way in this situation. Um, if I was getting this much attention in this situation, I would become egotistical. So therefore, you must be egotistical in this moment. Uh -uh, I'm not buying it that you're not, because how could you? You know, like that. Like, but then it's like, well, no, you have to step outside of yourself, <laughs> outside of yeah. that feeling, and like understand that, like again, like there's different types of people that you know the sun hits all of them, but some burn, some remain the same, some grow within, become more lively. Um, and so even though you might have burned in this situation, um, that person might be flourishing in this situation. In the same sense, you might flourish in a certain situation, but another person might burn yeah. in that same situation. And so although FI helps a lot with like being able to understand itself, and it's like, okay, from more deeply understanding myself, I can now understand you. Like that's how FI is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to also understand that people are just not you. Yeah. So even when you're deeply understanding yourself, as much as you might understand yourself, because the simple fact that the person is not you, they're just not going to operate the same way. And I guess that's where SE and NE come into play where it's like, okay, what other possibilities or what is actually, yeah. actually yeah. empirically just going on with this person? That means I have to now go and ask the person. <laughs> that yep. means I now have to go do this. Oh no, that's extroverted. I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I see there's there's a question about that. It's split into like three messages. So I didn't pull it up, but it's basically um yeah, like the ENFJ feels that he completely knows the INFP. And everything about them and it's trying trying to help trying to help and that person the infp feels controlled in the situation like you don't actually know me right so mm -hmm. like it's it, it's going with both and the, the solution to all this is to just talk it out and yeah. <laughs> you know but um yeah yeah i mean i i definitely ran into that a lot with my enfp friend actually like we mm -hmm. would just get into these situations where like my fi is saying this is what i would feel this is what i would want in a situation and then i do my anything and you know okay that's that's it but he's he's got his own perspective on it too and he's got his own situation that he was looking at me and saying well this is what this is what matt would want this is what matt's thinking and so we just kind of like misaligned because i think um you know the starting point of fi whatever identity point within fi that you're you're starting from and then going out with ne to over here and then over here over here over here it's, it's going in a completely different direction possibly than the other one mm -hmm. even if it is the starting initial like identity fi point right, right it, it could go in a completely different direction through just imagining the possibilities and yeah connect, yeah right yeah and so just re-grounding the situation um I think it's just so helpful and it's yeah, hard, it's hard I, as we both for mentioned. Sure. And I think like, that's a big tip for ENFJs too. Um, I feel like one thing that I've learned is to never act like I know someone. First of all, like nobody likes that, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, is possibly FE 101, maybe FE 102, but the thing you should just know is nobody likes when you're like, oh, like, I know you, unless if you're saying something along the lines of like, no, like Matt, I know you. So I know that you did not kill that person. I know that you did not, you know, like, you know, and that, then all, every, all of a sudden, like, you know, it's a different context. So it's like, people are like, yes, you do know me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you feel like, you know, someone in a way that's like, and you know, ENFJ is like, we're like, this is our God complex. It's like, because I know you and I do know what's best for you. 
Yeah. Um, people don't like that. Um, and so therefore, um, I think that's where, at least for me, and I'm definitely playing my cards here. It's like one of two things. Um, you either just really just release that idea of like you actually like knowing the person or you can still hold on to that thought like, okay, I do feel like I know this person. But again, play the part. Play as if you don't know them. <laughs> play as if like, you know, it's like, like my wife and I, it's so funny that like you will be like, and she knows this too. And so it's kind of funny because when this happens then she can like laugh about it now. But like sometimes she's like saying something or like she's explaining something and my, and I leaps and I'm able to like say things like, okay, you're saying this, 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 that, like before she's even done. And before she even like hears what I said, she just says, no, wrong. Er. <clears throat> but then she'll go on and explain exactly what I just said. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so how is that wrong from what I just said? And then she's like, I mean, because you were just acting like you know me. And it's like, okay, I did, yeah. I guess I did know her. But again, yeah. I, I should have just played the part and acted like, not even act, but like, you know, just let her speak. Let yeah. her express herself. And yeah, and then just, you know, oh, you know, because then, that's also part of the relationship right there. Um, again, like as a Christian, it's not to be like, you know, all spiritual and religious or whatever, but like there's this whole like notion that like, you know, God knows everything that you think and everything that you say. But if you want to have a relationship with him, even though he knows everything, you don't go to him and he's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> he speaks with you as if he doesn't know because he wants you to come and tell him. Same thing even like with the parent, you know, like I'm sure like with you and your daughter, there's going to be times where it's like, yeah, I knew this was going on, but you might not even say that out loud because yeah, yeah. you're waiting for her to come tell you that's what's mm -hmm. building the relationship. So mm -hmm. even, so as an ENFJ, even if you know things, play the part, <laughs> like that's yeah, that, like yeah. play the role and <laughs> allow the relationship to go the way that it is. Because if you continue to act like you know someone, they're gonna stop showing you who they are. Oh, I mm -hmm. thought you know me already, so I don't have to. I didn't have to share that with you, yeah. and now you're missing out on the relationship. And as an ENFJ, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. Just uh, I, I was clapping. I, I don't know if you saw me. I, I clapped. <laughs> um, yeah, just waiting and listening uh, would be so helpful for us <laughs> INFPs who talk slow, who need to feel through how, how they're feeling to express what it is. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, and, you know, not just my wife as an ENFJ, but just, you know, extroverts in general, like th they want something to happen a lot of times, mm -hmm. right? And um, before I even like get, like I'll get three words into a sentence and then, you know, for example, my wife will, say yeah and so this and this and this and like she she just picks it up and continues on with with the direction that she wants it to go and a lot mm -hmm. of times that is in the direction that i want it to go too but like i i want to say it <laughs> like yeah, just give me a second exactly. to, to get this that's out. my line <laughs> yeah, <right>? yeah. <laughs> let them, yeah let them play out the script um mm -hmm. and and I, I will say i think the reason why that happens sometimes too is because it's like an excitement like it's kind of like that moment in Frozen where it's like, that's what I was going to say. And then it's like, oh, we're like really like vibing. Yeah. But people won't always take it that way. They're yeah. like, yeah, that's what I was going to say, but I wanted to say it. It's like, yeah. oh, I thought that we were going to, uh, that's not what's happening. No, okay. My bad. So <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's people. People are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Okay, I gotta get going soon. I wanna mm. take my daughter to school. Um, sure. But there is one more question. Um, so any tips for an INFP to, I can't even read it, uh, getting closer to extroverts or ENFJs? Is there anything that like, that you would like us to do? Like what can we do? Sorry, my stomach is rumbling. I haven't eaten. <laughs> what can we do to like make 
your side of the relationship easier or better? Like, how can we facilitate that? Does that question make sense? How I kind of reworded this? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the same. That's a really good question. Because I know that for me and even another ENFJ that I know, we often like, I think maybe that's actually the answer. So I was going to say that that's an interesting question because we often feel like we have to be the ones that are facilitating. It's like, okay, you don't know how to drive INFP or ISFP or whoever. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. I'll drive. Um, but maybe they do know how to drive a little bit and they just don't want to. So if that's the case, it's like, well, I can drive most of the time. You know, I can have the vision for our friendship or for our relationship or whatever. But can I at least also feel like this is what you want too? Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times um, NFPs, from again, like my experience, I, I talked about this with um, Heidi Preeb um, on mm -hmm. my channel in a video called ENFP Misconceptions. And she said the most mind blowing thing I've ever heard about NFPs in my life. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. She said that you guys <laughs> can have a whole relationship with somebody in your head without the person even being there. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, so then it's like, you know, especially with like ENFPs, you become connected with them and you you have this instant rapport and it's like, oh, we're getting along, we're, this is this, that, we're gonna be best friends forever. And then all of a sudden like the, NFJ is like thinking long term, like, okay, this is what the dynamic is, FE, and long term, this is how it seems like it's going to be going. But then the NFP is like, shoo, and just all of a sudden strips all of their energy from it. Mm. And in my head, I saw it as ghosting. Yeah. Like, did you get bored of me? Or like, did I offend you? Like, what happened? Mm. Like, why are we so, you know, here? And then all of a sudden, like, now we just fell off, you know? Mm. But then the NFP is like, I don't know, like, we just kind of like, we built this, you know, and now it's like, all right, cool. Now that we built this, I'll come back when I feel like it. And maybe I won't feel like it, but, you know, and then it's just like, well, the fire is dwindling and dying. And so the way that I've been seeing it in my head is that um, FI users, um, especially from what I've seen, like NFPs, they will have this... Um, a clone of that person in their mind. Mm -hmm. um, and because they have a clone of that person in their mind, then it's like, they won't, they don't have to like actually interact with the person um, as frequently because it's like, oh, you know, I talked to the person today. Did you really? It's like, well, in my head I did. And it's <laughs> like, okay. But as an Ver FE user, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as an FE user it's like, we don't do that. We actually want to interact with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, as draining as it might be, try to actually like engage, you know, like when you think about us, you know, hit us up, you know, or like say like, hey, you know, I thought of you. I want to actually have this conversation with you. Like this is, this is one of my any thoughts that I had. <laughs> what do you think about this? You know, like let's have a discussion because NFJs especially, we build depth of connection through deep conversation. Um, and so when we feel like we haven't been having deep conversation in a long time, that fire is dwindling. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like you're not adding firewood to the fire and I'm the only one that's doing that because in your head you have a replica of that firewood that you've mm -hmm. been adding firewood to and it's not reality, then it's like, well, I think I'm going to check out. I'm not going to invest in this relationship anymore. Um, so to answer your question, I think that as long as you can um, do your part in continuing to keep the dynamic, that flame burning, and don't let that the other, the ENFJ, do all of the work. Yeah, that'll that'll really really help a lot, and they will see you for that, and they'll appreciate you for your efforts. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that's really good, and I can see that dynamic in my relationship too. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely more investing of myself 
um, mm. in that with intention um, would improve a lot of things as well. Um, the the standard perceiver, you know, the FP desire to like just not be tied down. I guess the NP as well, right? To just not be tied down and and be able to deal with it whenever it comes up and not have to worry down the line. You know, all that yeah. stuff is a quite a big pull. But uh, investing yourself into the relationship is uh, very much a key. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, right before you get off, I just want to know, like, what would you say? For ENFJs, especially like being married to one. Um, that's a good one. Let me let me think. Um, definitely. Uh, as as we already mentioned, like give time for the INFP to think through and talk about things in their own way, and just mm. like just sit back and listen, or at least pretend to listen, and then <laughs> pretend that you stop pretending. And, and just yeah, but it's uh it would it, it would definitely help I think a lot of the relationship stuff um, mm -hmm. and yeah there's there's all I don't know really how to word this there's always this back and forth between like uh, you're not expressing enough is what I'm told and I'm like well mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling it like I, I feel it in here I'm just not <laughs> expressing it right like yeah um and this constant like kind of push for me to what I feel is act uh, mm -hmm. and and express it more in a, in a in a bigger way but that feels disingenuous to me right mm -hmm. it, like I, I'm feeling it deeply if I if I'm like oh this, this is amazing this is the best food ever like that that feels like I'm just you know mm -hmm. acting for the sake of acting but I am mm -hmm. feeling it so I think there there might be some way to to kind of appreciate that within the INFP, like if, if I say I like this, I like it, right? Like okay. I, you know, like just trust that if I if I took the time to bring that out and say yes, I, I like this thing, I want to do this thing, then please trust that that is. Sorry, my stomach is so wrongly. Please trust that that is like true, and yeah. I mean it, and I might not be expressing it too much here or with my eyes or like the the volume of my voice or anything like that, but um, mm -hmm. it is a uh, truth. Are y'all able to articulate it well enough? Like like the yeah. INFP Albany friend that I talked about earlier, um, she expresses and she's not like grandiose with it, mm. but she'll like either text me or like we'll be on FaceTime and she'll like tell me like straight as face, like, like Denzel, like I really appreciate you and Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And if anything, I prefer that person. Yeah. Like, I'm not personally, I'm not really that big of a fan of like ah! type of energy. Scarcely. Yeah. But I am like a words of affirmation type of person. And if I get mm -hmm. like a, if I get the tone of like, no, you are serious. And it's not like a, oh, yeah, I like it, you know, but mm -hmm. it's like, hey, you know, actually like that, that really meant a lot to me, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like that'll do it for me. Yeah. Okay, I can actually see that you you did sincerely feel it inside, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think the words of affirmation, kind of love languages thing, probably comes into play too. She's more of like a an actions. And, mm. and got you. Okay. Things. Got so, you. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't nice. know. Just uh, comes back down to. To talking <laughs> through the relationship, I guess. For sure. Um, I do got to get going. Got to make mm -hmm. sure that I can at least say goodbye. Uh, she's downstairs. So. Yeah. No uh, thank you very much for joining. This was a great conversation. It was nice to get you get to know you better, as well as get to know more about ENFJs from uh, your perspective. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's thank great you. getting to know you more as well. Thanks. And thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, it's nice to have the support and, and questions and stuff in the comments. If uh, <clears throat> if you want to check out Denzel's channel, uh, just YouTube Denzel Mensa, um, as well as um, we'll put a comment down below and I'll pin it to the top and everybody can get more information about your coaching and, and services and stuff too. Yeah, sure. Good? I mean, I guess if you don't mind me also saying that... Uh... 
me and Joyce Mang, the INFJ, uh, that was actually on here a couple mm-hmm. months ago, I think. Yep. We also started a new channel, like literally this week. It's called The Knife Show. So N-I-F-E Show. Oh, okay. um, if any of y'all are interested in that, y'all can definitely check it out too. Um, we have a lot of videos coming up on there soon. But yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Yep. I'll put that in the comment too. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. Well, thanks again, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Goodbye, everybody. See you, Denzel. <laughs>